Good afternoon and welcome back to my workbench where today I've decided to finally get around to um, doing this uh Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench where today I've finally got around to uh, testing out this toner transfer paper I bought from China um, from eBay. Now this stuff is um, significantly cheaper than the uh, Pulsar Pro FX stuff which is what I've been previously using and what a lot of people recommend and I recommend it too because it's really good. But it is, well, significantly more expensive than this stuff. Or to put it this way, this stuff is significantly cheaper than this. Probably about by about 10 times I would say. Um, I got these 10 sheets for $2.50 New Zealand, which is, you know, less than US dollars. Um, whereas this is about $15 US for 10 sheets of this. So you can see straight away that it's, uh, this one's significantly cheaper. But the question is, is it any good? Well, I don't know, um, and one, one of you in the comments told me it was, um, but I've not tried it myself, so I'm going to do that. Um, now, someone else reminded me recently to, to um, ask me if I had tried this yet, and I hadn't, so um, thanks for that. I've uh, finally got around to doing it, and I decided, well, I might as well make something with it that I want to make anyway, so um, I'm going to be... Uh, doing another power supply, not a benchtop power supply, but uh, this is the final board design layout that I've got. Um, it's going to be a remake of this one, which is on strip board and didn't work properly, and it's going to be on this, and it's for a little preamp that I want to make. Um, but that's kind of beside the point, I guess. Anyway, um, that's just for information, but um, yeah, so this, on the other hand, I figured, well, you know, I didn't want to go to all the trouble of printing something out and transferring it and all that stuff, and, you know, just without any actual purpose, so I figured I might as well make something with it. Um, but yeah, so first of all, I guess first impressions is, well, it's a lot uh, curlier. And that's because when you buy it, or when I bought it, they uh, had it rolled up like this and stuck in a little uh, bubble envelope thing like most stuff from China. So um, that's kind of annoying because it gives it a sort of a, a curl to it and it makes it difficult to stick in your printer. Um, in fact, it's so difficult to stick in your printer that uh, the first attempt I made at printing with it, it just promptly jammed in the input rollers and I had to pull it out again. So, um, yeah, it gets points off for that. Uh, I would say if you um, bend it backwards like this and sort of flatten it out, um, it goes in easier. But on my second printing attempt, it's uh, jammed halfway through the fuser instead. And I ended up with... Yeah, let's have a look. So I ended up with this, um, which I cut in half from a, a big sheet because I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to waste the whole thing. But it turns out, you know, it's um, probably so cheap it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, it's uh, sort of jammed up in the printer and folded in half and got wrapped around something and I had to pull it out again. It's not even transferred. It's, you know, it's all just smudgy. It hasn't fused onto the stuff yet. So um, that wasn't particularly good. Third time lucky though. I finally got the stuff to go through and ended up with this, um, which seemed to transfer perfectly fine onto the paper anyway, no uh, no big deal issues there, um, it didn't jam, and it seems to be pretty clean. Um, I would say though that does have there's a slight part on here where it's wrinkled a little bit, um, which has left a sort of crack in the toner, which is, means it will be something I'll have to uh, fix up later. Um, this print was better than this one. This one's got uh, sort of a bald patch in there. It's bigger than this one, so that's probably a better one to use and just touch up the crack. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of printing, it uh, seems to work once you get it to actually go through your printer. Now, that may or may not be because my printer's quite old. It's probably from the mid 90s. It's an Epson EPL 5900L. Um, maybe the rollers are a bit worn. I don't know. Um, but this stuff is pretty thin. This stuff's actually uh, much thinner than this. This is kind of more like, this feels more like cardstock or something, um, as opposed to this, which is probably even thinner than standard paper. Or Yeah, this, this feels thinner than normal paper, so some printers may have a problem with that, some might not. Some probably will have a problem because it's curly. You'll have to flatten it out before you stick it in. I mean, with my one, I have to stick it in this way. Um, if you had a printer where it went that way, maybe it'd be okay. But you have to print on the shiny side. You can't print on the dull side, otherwise it won't work. So, 
thing to uh, take note of. So printing on it, yeah, um, could be an issue depending on your printer. Specifically how thick it is? I don't know. I'll have a look. I've got a micrometer here. I can uh, give it a test. This one comes out about 10. This point point zero one millimeters. Well, let's compare that to normal paper first. Let's take a standard paper. What's this? This is well, <laughs> not much thicker. It's um point zero one one. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So um. Yeah, if this is only fractionally thinner than this, then it really it shouldn't jam, should it? So the problem then is uh, either to do with the fact that it's possibly the... Uh, the uh, shiny side on this is definitely a lot sort of slicker and shinier than the, uh, the shiny side on the other stuff. Um, so maybe it slid on the rollers or something. Um, or it could be the, um, the fact that it was a bit bent like I said. Um, I don't know, but uh, there we go. That's, um, that's one thing. This, uh, the blue stuff on the other hand, have a look at that. I'll just pull this out. This one on the other hand is 20 23, so that's, uh, yeah, 0 0.023 millimeters. So this one is um, over twice as thick as uh, this one. But yeah, once you actually get the paper stuff to go through your printer properly, it uh, does seem to print out pretty well. Um, I can't see any real big issues with it. So um, that part of the process is uh, not too bad. Um, but now I'll actually transfer this to this uh, piece of blank board here um, with my laminator. And we'll see um, if that part actually works. Okay, so my laminate is here. It's all uh, heated up to the correct temperature. And I can attach this uh, to this. So I'll just tape this on as usual. I've done everything exactly the same as I would with the other transfer paper. Um, I've cleaned the board with just scouring pad, sandpaper, usual stuff. Um, nothing fancy. Um, I'm just going to do exactly the same you know, thing to do a fair comparison. Okay, that all looks good. So, um, let's run it through and see what happens. So, I usually make a few passes with this. This where board shouldn't take too long. Um, but I probably won't show this entire thing. It just takes too long. Looks like it's sticking down. I'll do it through a few times. Yeah, it's not totally sticking yet, so let's just uh, give it maybe, I don't know, five, ten. I usually go with like eight. Eight passes usually good enough um, by then, but who knows, you know, it's a small board, so maybe not only need five or something. Do it once more. Feels pretty warm, so it should be done. Huh. Looks like it's actually started transferring already, so coming off, but yeah, okay, that looks alright, so um, it's probably done. Um, I'll um, get some water to put this in, just in case. I don't want to pull it, you know, I mean, hey, maybe it comes off dry, but I don't want to pull it just in case it wrecks anything, so um, I'm just going to get a bit of water to put this in, and then we'll see um, see how it goes. Alright, time for the moment of truth. Got some water here, obviously, and uh, I'll just put this in and see what happens. It's uh, quickly going a different colour. Well, not a different colour, it's um, going darker. I can see the... Uh, can 
see the water going through the paper saturating quite quickly it's interesting now the pulsar probably would have come off by now so let's uh, see how this is so there you go, you can see it's um, you can see the design through the paper now it's uh, showing up quite well, so it's uh, that happened quite quite rapidly. So can we peel it off? It's a little bit tougher to get off. It doesn't, huh? It doesn't slide off. The Pulsar Pro stuff just falls straight off. But uh, this sort of, if you kind of pull it, it's like peeling, peeling a uh, thing. But yeah, that's pretty much. Hang on. That's pretty much come off perfectly. Well, it has come off perfectly. I mean, yeah. There's uh, no toner left on the paper or anything. Um, so that's uh, good. And the... Um, board is transferred nice and cleanly so you can see the um I mean there's a couple of little pinholes in that but that's just from the uh from a slight wrinkle in the paper and from my printer I think just not being perfect it's the kind of thing you expect that happens with the other stuff as well but I mean yeah it's uh it's definitely worked definitely worked well so yeah I guess yeah in terms of its transferability um, in terms of its transferability, it definitely works. Um, and printing, obviously. So, that's good. Can't see any issue with that. Um, final question, though, is can it now accept the uh, the green TRF foil stuff? Um, I mean, that's another question. You see, this stuff is... Uh, Obviously, a different coating on it. I don't know what they what they've used. I don't know what Pulsar Pro uses, um, but it's obviously different. It uh, feels different. Like I said, it's more sort of shiny and slick. The uh, stuff on the blue one is, feels more sort of matte, um, and this is obviously harder to peel off. So there's some difference. But so that's the question: Has it left? Uh, what I want to know is: Has it left any sort of residue on on the toner here, which might prevent the uh, TRF from uh, sticking to it? when I run it through the laminator again um, because if that's the case then it's essentially kind of pointless because the TRF is very very useful for uh, fixing up pinholes and, and sort of light spots in the toner which is inevitable with just about every printer um, so yeah I just wanted to see what that does alright so I'm just about to try the uh, TRF stuff um, tape that onto this side and uh, fold it over you want to put the matte side towards the toner, so we'll uh, put this through the laminator again. Should only take one pass, and we'll see if the uh, stuff will stick. And hopefully, it doesn't wrinkle up this time. So that's the problem I had with it last time I tried this. And the leading edge got a little bit wrinkled, but I've taped it on the full width of the board this time, so it may be better. Okay, that's not wrinkled, that looks good. Um, that should have worked. So let's just pull that off and see if it's any good. Yep, perfect. Look at that. Perfect hole in the uh, foil here, and perfect transfer of the uh, of the green terrier. So that's good. That's very good. That tells me that this stuff is um, working very well. Oh, there's a slight little line here where there was a wrinkle, but yeah, I mean otherwise. Um, that's great. Everything's uh, everything's come out well. So 
I guess we can say that uh, despite the um, despite the printing annoyances, the uh, uh, Chinese toner transfer paper does work well, um, and it is compatible with the uh, green TRF and I suppose white TRF from uh, Pulsar Pro FX. So, um, if you need to do that, then that's great. If not, well, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, that works pretty good. So I guess the question is, um, is it worth it? Um, I'd say, I mean, the fact that it's about 10 times cheaper is definitely, um, obviously, a uh, big bonus. Um, and the fact that it works really well is um, also really good. So much cheaper and works well. That's nice. Um, but does seem to be, it, you know, it, it's less than half the thickness of the Pulsar Pro paper, and it does seem to have a tendency to jam printers. Whether or not that's just my particular one, or because it's quite old, um, I don't know, but the um, fact they sell it to you rolled up in a scroll, and you have to try and get it flat to put it in your printer, well, that could be part of the problem. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say... Um, is it worth it? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide, I guess. You have to... Um, Make the decision. Do you want to pay the uh, pay the higher cost for the Pulsar Pro and get something that you know isn't going to jam your printer? Something which you can confidently take to copy copy shops and and you know libraries, print places, whatever. Um, you know, and there's a they've got the label and everything, and it tells you that it's compatible with lasers, and you know it's not going to jam because it's nice and thick and straight and everything. Um, if you took the Chinese stuff to a printing copy shop, they'd probably tell you to go away because it uh, doesn't look very good and yeah if it jammed up you know a photocopier at a copy shop they probably wouldn't let you come back so yeah is, is it worth it I don't know up to you but if you've got an old laser printer that you don't care about potentially jamming or maybe even damaging um, I guess it's it's fine so yeah um, so would I buy this again um, not really sure. I I kind of want to say that I wouldn't because the Pulsar Pro stuff is clearly better, um, isn't likely to jam your printer, and I use so little of it that I think it's probably worth it. And when you think of the uh, you know size of a typical board like this um, compared to the size of a, a full sheet of paper, I mean, you know, you can get a good amount of boards out of one sheet for for what two dollars a sheet, ten of them twenty bucks, then. You know, that's $2 a sheet. Divide that by maybe 10, that's 20 cents a board. You know, that's not bad. Um, I mean, yeah, the uh, Chinese stuff is obviously a lot cheaper, but um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the printing issues, I, I would say that I um, it might be just worth it using the Pulsar Pro stuff, to be honest. But in saying that, Chinese stuff works perfectly fine as transfer paper. Um, if you don't mind the possibility of, of printing annoyance. But yeah, if you're on a budget, it's definitely a good price, and it does work very well, so... Yeah, anyway. Um, with that, uh, that verdict, I'll... Uh, well, not really a verdict, it's uh, up to you. Buy it if you want. I don't know. I don't care. I have no um, financial interest in either company, so... Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully it may help you make a decision between whether to buy the Pulsar Pro or the cheap Chinese paper. Maybe. Anyway, see you next time.